Building a tabletop arcade gaming cabinet is remarkably easy using a small form factor computer. You can do this with just a few hundred dollars in parts, but we decided to go all out and put together this 4K arcade gaming machine. It runs emulators for nearly every retro gaming console and some fun and easy to pick up multiplayer Steam titles. Building your own requires some basic woodworking skills, along with some basic Arduino coding skills, which are easily learned from simple tutorials online. Step one is to gather up all the parts you'll need for the console. We started with the Intel NUC as the heart of our system, paired up with an Acer 4K monitor. We went through a few design iterations before deciding on real arcade buttons and joysticks for a true two-player arcade experience. The buttons and joysticks came as a set, with player one and two start buttons. They all wire to a Teensy, which is like a small Arduino microcontroller. The Teensy will act like a keyboard encoder, turning button presses into keyboard signals for the NUC. Before building the cabinet, we assembled one button and wired it through the Teensy to test out the keyboard encoding software. A short Arduino program running on the chip sends these signals to the computer as keyboard presses, where another program turns them into game controller inputs. You can find the code we use in the links below the video. To build the cabinet itself, you'll need a good set of basic woodworking tools. A power drill, jigsaw, and clamps are a great start, and of course a measuring tape and pencil to mark where you're going to cut, plus an L-square to get nice straight lines. Also grab some sandpaper. The design of the cabinet comes from the traditional upright arcade shape, which is reproduced in MDF plywood and 2x4s. MDF is great because it's lightweight and inexpensive. It's also easy to work with. Okay, now time for the mandatory disclaimer. Woodworking can be dangerous, so always use proper protective devices, and remember, most tools are sharp. For more woodworking safety advice, follow the link below. We found a plan for the cabinet online and modified the size and shape so it would be short enough to fit comfortably on a countertop and provide an exact fit for our monitor. Our CAD software helped out by measuring each piece on the cabinet in MDF. From that, we measured and cut all the pieces with a jigsaw. Putting all the pieces together is fairly straightforward. Make sure to pre-drill all of the holes and use either a countersink or a drill bit to allow for the screws to seat flush on the cabinet. Follow your plans to be sure each piece is in the right place and don't fasten down the control panel at this point. We'll need access to that to install the buttons and joystick. Place the components inside the cabinet to determine where they'll end up in the cabinet to make sure everything fits the way you think it will. Also check to make sure the monitor fits perfectly inside. After priming and painting the cabinet and drilling holes for the buttons and joysticks, we're ready to assemble all the electronics inside. The first step is mounting the monitor. We were able to use the original monitor stand and just screwed that to the lower frame of the cabinet. Depending on your monitor and design, you might choose to use a Visa mount. Next is the most time-consuming step, mounting and wiring the controls. To assemble your own controls, you'll need a soldering iron, some wire, and a breadboard. Depending on the buttons and joysticks you choose, you may also need an assortment of connectors and zip ties to keep the whole setup neat and organized. The joysticks use four switches that provide eight total directions of movement. Each button is equipped with a switch that shorts a connection when the button is pressed, allowing the microcontroller to know which is being operated. One connection on each button is attached to an input, and the negative connections are tied together with a shared ground. All of the control switches are wired to the microcontroller, which is mounted on a breadboard to give us a bit more room to work, as well as allowing us to make changes to the layouts as we see fit. Test out all the switches to make sure everything is working properly, then secure the control panel. Attach the power strip, breadboard, and NUC. Also use zip ties to keep wiring from looking messy. Now we'll do the final programming on the microcontroller. For the keyboard emulator, a loop will run that constantly checks the status, open or closed, of the circuit formed by each button. You'll also need to make use of an Arduino function called debounce, which will keep your button presses registering at an acceptable rate to prevent weird issues from too many inputs at once. By changing user login settings on the NUC and flipping some switches in the Steam settings, we can make the system boot straight into Steam Big Picture mode. The joysticks and button function as a keyboard and mouse, and the signals are converted into game bad button presses. Steam is able to take these button presses and use them for almost any game that supports controllers, as well as the emulators we have set up. 